actions. They speak louder. We we'll be live on here in a in a few a few moments. Listen to a little music as we get ready. What is this thing, Sean? What is this thing? Oh, that's a wrist strap for your selfie stick. For the selfie stick? Man, I need to shave today. Hmm. You like this song, kid? Have you ever heard it? Did I turn you on to this song? I think I, I think I did. Hey folks, hello, GTT here. We're about to crank up Real Estate 101 with me. If you got any questions, you might not be able to hear me, but if you've got any questions, please feel free. We're trying something new. Please feel free to ask me because my goal is to, ed to help educate people on real estate in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I feel like I've got to get down here, Sean, to look into that. Can people? Yeah, they can see you. Are you sure? Come on. All right. Hey, turn your stuff down over there. I got my kid in here, as always, Sean White. Got to give a shout out to him and Kathleen McWilliams has helped me get this up because believe it or not, folks, I don't have many technology skills. I got communication skills is what I got. If anybody, uh, if you if you don't know who I am, if, you, if you're uh, watching this from another source, my name is Tommy Davidson. I'm a real estate agent in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I've only been with one agency, one guy, John Jones, my entire career. I'm from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, hey, Kathleen, our girl, thanks for tuning in. What I want to talk about is uh, why you should choose, why, why it matters where you buy, where you buy your home. And we get people all the time that think, well, you know, I don't care about school zones. I don't have any kids. Well, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you a few reasons why you need to care. Where you buy is, should be, you should be identifying the best school areas because of a few different reasons. So, Sean, is there any questions before I get started in this? Anybody anybody from our engaged followers want to know? Uh, yeah, somebody on Google asked why we, uh, if one school zone is more valuable than another. Uh, that, that is uh, a great question. And when most people move into our school zone, or into our town, most people have kids. And they're going to want to know they're going to do all this research on um, which school is uh, which school is the best, and people are going to jockey to get into that particular area. So the demand works like this: Me and Sean were married. He's lucky enough to have me, although I don't I don't like him or men. But uh, we're, we're we're moving to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and we're looking we're doing our research. We want to be in Blackman. We've done all of our stuff, all of our research, and it says we want to be in Blackman. So what that does is it pushes everyone to Blackman school zone. So whatever homes are available within those parameters, that's what are you saying? That's not true. Huh? What's not true? We're not married. Oh, no, we're not married. Oh, uh, David asked, what? Does no, hold on. Oh, I'm not finished. I get distracted very easily. So the more people and. <laughs> The more people that are in fighting in that one area, it's going to inflate values in that area. So the benefit would be I moved into this area. I may not be in the best location in that area, but I get a benefit from people wanting to be in that school zone. Well, there are other questions. What do the numbers for the schools really mean on the Real, ooh, God, David Williams, man, you came down. I didn't want you to ask a question that hard, David. Uh, I don't know what those numbers are. Do you know what David's? I, well, man, I just called you. I don't know why you haven't shown up yet, but I appreciate you sharing the stream. I usually have my partner in crime, the weatherman, Stephen Weathers, with me. But, uh, David, I don't know about these websites. 
everybody, uh, I don't know, I think you should probably go to one central source that gives data throughout, uh, throughout the state. So I don't know what websites, I don't know how they come up with it, I don't know the validity of it. So I'd be very careful about trusting data on some real estate website. I think there's probably .orgs or something that I would go to. But David, I appreciate you uh, asking that question. Stephen, are you going to come by? So, um, before I keep going, is there any other questions that we have? And back back in the old day of Murfreesboro, there was two school zones. It really didn't matter. There, for us old school people, there was Riverdale and there was Oakland. Didn't really affect property values back then like it does now. So, let's go back to... Uh, to the mid 2000s where everyone wanted to stick to everybody uh sean my kid sean what had a great i'm going to give a plug for our site now if you've got your own agent or other agents have something but our site mine is tommy.murfreesborohomesonline.com and I feel like that's the best search site. So I'm, I'm going to start talking about that because this is not about me. This is about educating others. So um, back in uh, back in the mid 2000s, school zones. When Siegel came along, everybody wanted to get into that new school. So Oakland was on the north east side of Murfreesboro. Siegel was centrally located on the north side. So there was these subdivision fights where. Uh, at one time, they would have thought they were going to Siegel. Like, Brent Mead was a subdivision that was in arm and just in uproar over where they were going to be zoned. And I think they, I think initially, they maybe they got to stay in Siegel. Maybe then they were changed back to Oakland. That's not the point. The point is, the subdivisions in the 2000s when Siegel came along outperformed everybody because there was so much demand for people wanting to be in the Siegel. The same thing happened with Blackman and Riverdale. Blackman came in, it took a lot of students away from Riverdale, but all these subdivisions that were zoned for Blackman greatly outperformed the other two older places. So I want you to get, uh, I'm gonna try to articulate this, how this is gonna help you. So whenever, if we're looking from 30,000 feet down onto Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and we've got all these different school zones out there, I want you to imagine this a wall that's going up into the air. And there's, there's the high school and then there's the parameters. Right now, if you're looking on a map, you're just gonna see lines. But look at that as a wall that's going way up into the air. Like Donald Trump wants to build that big wall. Well, we're gonna build this big wall that's got Blackman, Siegel, Oakland, and Riverdale. And it doesn't matter if you're like right on the edge of the Siegel area, right on the very edge, you know, one street over, you could be in Oakland. That subdivision is going to get the benefit from all of the people that are searching. When they're searching on these search sites, they're not looking at with lines and locations. They're searching primarily by the school zones that, uh, Sorry, weatherman. Uh, I just now saw that. So these people, they're searching for the best schools. And then they're going to have their search site that is set. I want these parameters. We've got to be in X school. We've got to be in that school. Well, what happens is these subdivisions where all the student, all the parent want their students to go, those, those areas really have in the past 10 years greatly, greatly outperformed the older so whenever you're looking, you could be a few streets over, like we're right over here off of Highway 96, and it's a very close divide between Blackman and Riverdale. So you could go a few hundred yards either way, and you could see huge price discrepancies with the people that get to go to Blackman. That's They're right there on that imaginary line where they're getting a the benefit of all the other subdivisions in Blackman. So people... Whenever you buy and you're looking at value, you might find a house that's very similar because a lot of builders are repeating the same plans. You may see a uh, you may see um, home values on one side of town greatly. There, there's a huge price discrepancy there. So I've got a few questions. Stephen Weathers, you should be here. Who's showing homes today? 
He's out at Shorn Homes, and he's asking me, what is the best school district? Well, that would be that would be uh, a matter of opinion. What matters, how how would you define what the best school district is, Stephen? Are you talking about what's, what, who has the best grades? Are you determining who's got the best amenities by that team. school? The best football team, a lot of, hey, back in the day, Stewart's Creek, well, Stephen, you're going to be shout out for Stewart's Creek. Back in the day when there was two, there was literally, when Riverdale was a dominant football team, and this is going to sound crazy for people, when Riverdale was dominating, they uh, they would have kids moving in here from Gallatin, from Cookville. They were coming because of their football team. Then Oakland, they had a principal over there with a great vision, um, uh, Mr. Vaughn, who Butch Vaughn, he went to Oakland and he came up with that IB program. So they offered something that would get people, you could actually go to Oakland and not live in that zone, but what it did is it helped the perception of that school. So there was a long time where you would have a great house in the Hamptons. In the Hamptons is a subdivision that was owned Oakland High School. Well, it would greatly underperform similar houses that would be like in a Prim Springs neighborhood, which was all Siegel. And I'm talking like the home values in the Hamptons, they probably depreciated over a few years where homes in Prim Springs went through the roof. I mean, there was there were people that would fight to get their kids in with the administration of these schools. They would lie about where they live. They would come up, they would produce fake contracts and were moving to that place. Uh, got a question here. Does a good school zone help preserve home value, ensure faster real estate rates? I would say yes. They definitely do because people, like right now, the big buzz, no offense to the other schools that I don't mention, but right now, more people are going to talk about Blackman and they're going to talk about Siegel. So if we're looking in those areas, we're going to look to see where the best value, not necessarily the best price, but we're going to look at what has the most value. And that could be, it could, that could be determined by whoever, but the, uh, the, the, the places or the subdivisions that fall within right now, Blackman and Siegel, there's more demand. There's more people that are put, the, 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 more, the more demand that you get, the more demand that you have, that naturally increases prices. So with all these people in Murfreesboro and whoever's moving in here, they're really fixated on Blackman and they're fixated on Siegel. Now, Stewart's Creek's going to be a new school. Then I guess Rockville or, or I don't know what's coming next. People like to be in the new schools. Do we, do we have any questions? Am I explaining this as people? Do you understand what I'm saying, Sean? I'm getting what you're saying. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back here's here's how I was wanting to start this. Let's say, you know, I worked John Jones is a developer here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And um, a developer buys raw land. And then when they're buying this raw land, they're gonna determine how many homes they can get off this piece of raw land. Then they're going to determine what type of houses that they could put in here. And they're going to be very skewed towards Blackman and Siegel. So they're willing to pay more for land in that area. Blackman, Siegel, Stewart's Creek. So if John was looking to buy something and develop it, he's going to be willing to pay the, the farmers or whoever owns that land more so than let's just say if we were going out on the east side, far away from the interstate. That land is not going to be as appealing. So the developer comes in here, and what he believes he can sell the lots for is what he's going to determine what he's willing to pay for that land. So he's going to have a lot more confidence when he goes into a Blackman or Siegel area to, to pay a premium for that land. So he goes in there, and let's just say if he's paying $20,000 an acre, it's got sewer, then he's got to develop it. Let's just say if he's got to sell these lots now for $65,000, this is going to determine the builders, what they're going to come in there and put the product, what type of product they're going to put out there. So a good rule of thumb right now is whatever your lot cost is, 
you've got to be about five times. You've got to be five times what what you paid for the lot in order for the builder to, to build the product, to buy the lot, build the house, sell it, pay the agent, and for him to make a profit. If, if the builder is not making a certain profit, he's not going to get money from the bank to go out there and build more houses. So the starting point where the price is, is the amount that the developer is going to pay for the land. Does that make sense, Sean? Mm -hmm. What are you doing over there? I'm reading comments and making sure that... Are you liking whatever? I got a question from a girl, Kathleen. When the school becomes overcrowded and they bring in trailers to hold the extra students, would that decrease the value in our home? Boy, you got some good questions. Kathleen, you're asking questions only the scholars can know. I would say the answer to that, when people are moving over there, the uh, that's going to be before. People are going to see that before the housing market corrects from that, if that makes sense. When people are listing their home, they're not concerned if they've had to bring in other things to hold all the students over there. That's not going to drive down value. You know what that could do is it could probably make parents unhappy with the school, but still they're going to want their kids in Blackman. They're going to want them in Siegel. So I don't see that being a problem. Now where it could, if there's more data that says, they're in these uh, modular or whatever they call them. Hey, Roger Sargent. If test scores, I think test scores is probably what everybody's looking at. And I don't know how fair that is. Any future developments in the Blackman area for G, Blackman area for G2T? Uh, I would say most of the developments you're going to see is going to be on the west side of I-24 towards 840. That's where all the growth is going to be. And Bob Parks... I think uh, about full, isn't it? Well, it's going to grow into Stewart's Creek, but what what I'm, what I'm the word on the street is, is Bob Parks has bought that land that they were going to put the Bible Park. And I think he's probably... I think he will do a subdivision that's probably like a Berkshire. Bob Parks is a guy I have tremendous respect for. He really goes all over the country and he finds very cool themes. I mean, he's got things in Florida. He's got, I mean, he's huge in Nashville now. So I would say Bob is gonna come here if he's if the paper is accurate and all that stuff goes through. I would say he's gonna do one of those cool, trendy type subdivisions where it's just gonna put more attention on Blackman. I see Blackman, Stewart Creek, I see all that area. I, I don't, I see that's where the future of our town is going, in my opinion, because there's a lot of land, there's a lot of demand, People love interstate access, so when you're over here, you've got 24, you've got 840, you've got Franklin down the road. So I see, I see the west side continuing to really grow, Dave. What about you, Sean? Have you got, have you got any questions that have popped up? Anything? Uh, not yet. I'm still looking at Google, making sure it's understandable. We got our guy on uh, Google, Sean White, over there. Now again, everybody, I do this every Wednesday, one o'clock, where we're just talking real estate 101 with me. I'm GTT, Good Time Tommy. If you have any questions about real estate, if uh, if you would post them, I will come back and we'll um, we'll answer them. You could also email me at my email address is Tommy at JohnCJones.com. You can call me. I give out my personal cell phone number. 615-618-3435 and I love talking real estate with people and I love talking with other agents about this so this isn't I don't want you to feel like this is a way that I'm trying to sell people I like the sense of community when you live in you know the people they the the she sense of a community stuff coming Say so what? So she's got some fantastic. She does, Kathleen. Man, you've been awesome today. If you go over to Puckett Station, actually, I think Puckett Station is about to open up a new section. You know where Puckett Station is, Sean? Yeah. We're over here behind us. Puckett Station at one time was going to open up a new section, and they had 28 lots that they were going to develop in that section. And there was a hold on every single lot for months. 
I talk like in Creek's Bend right now, we're opening up a section. I think we're going to have uh, six lots in this one little section. Then the other one is going to have 25 lots. Well, the six section or the six six lot section, we're going to we've got four holds out of six. Well, in Blackman and Puckett Station, 28 lots were held. There were 20 lot. 28 lots available, 28 lot holds, and there were people in line if one of those people fell out. So what does that do to prices? Guess what that does to prices in Pocket Station? It pushes them up. Luckily, the appraisers, they're not going to allow it to just go through the roof. But when you've got that kind of demand, the, the prices are going to go up. They're going to keep getting pushed up. Our viewers are starting to climb, it looks like. I've been going for 20 minutes. Is there anything I've left out, Sean, I should have included? Um. So, again, if everybody that's looking to buy a house and you don't have kids and you don't think you're ever going to have kids, the resale is going to be affected by the school district that you live in. And if you're out there looking and you just want the best price on something, you you're probably going to see a school zone that's underperformed. You're not going to catch up with these other places more than likely unless a new catalyst were to come in to push your values back up. So some, if you were moving to town, would you buy and puck it? <laughs> or Breckenridge. That comes down to a price point, Mr. Weatherman. I love Breckenridge. And right now, I'm toying with if I would ever want to move. I may move. And I'm looking. I'm a north side of town guy. And um, Breckenridge is a subdivision that I, some of my friends live over there. When I go over there, they've got these very wide streets. They've got big yards. They've got a lot of character. I mean, it's a very beautiful subdivision. I love that subdivision. But then I go over to Puckett Station. And if you don't know where Puckett Station is, to, to describe this area, it's all fortress. You pull in, you go past some apartment buildings, but you go through there and you go into this, um, it's not a gated, but it's a very, uh, it's got a median, with, it's just got a lot of landscape. On one side you've got townhomes, one side you've got a product, now it's probably three to 400,000. And then there's the big boy section where like Ben Blake, he just built his, he's got about a, $900,000 house in there. So you've got this, it's a master plan community, but you pull into it and it's beautiful. Well, the, the townhomes, they're townhomes, but they're nice townhomes. The smaller section, I can't remember, I can't remember exactly what that's called, but this neighborhood is not for everybody. Kathleen lives over there. Dave and Kathleen live over there. They're smaller yards. The homes are closer to the street. The homes are closer to the neighbors. The homes are built with a fiber cement. That's that's hardy board for what us rednecks call it. The homes are all different colors. There may be five or six different colors over there, but if you drive into this, this is something for you. Like if you ever go to Seaside or somewhere down in uh, in 30A Florida area, Seaside watercolor. The, these things are very cool. It's a very trendy place. It's not for everybody. A friend of mine, man, Kira Sloan, Kira, I haven't seen you ask any questions, but Kira, Kira really liked Puckett Station. Matt drove through there and he hated Puckett Station because he didn't feel like he had any yard. Under ask my ask my question, Sean. What question you want to know? If you were moving, would you buy in Puckett or Breckenridge? Well, man, I, I, I don't know where I'd want to go with her, man. It would just depend. I went through, uh, um, I've gone through a few of those houses over there. I don't think I want to be in the five or $600,000 range. I want to have, I want to have other things to do. The families in Puckett have a neighborhood block parties. We play four square. That's another thing. That's a great point. Places like a, a subdivision like Puckett, you're close like that. And there's a lot of a uh, an engaged following of the neighborhood where everybody's extremely friendly and there's a lot of families that, that really get involved with one another. The old neighborhood, I would say that was like, was like an Indian Hills where people would pull up on their golf cart 
and they would they would they would drive to their neighbors. Well, Puckett Station has that same kind of feel. It's a, I mean, Puckett Station is probably my favorite subdivision in this town. If that if I had to answer the question, whether man, if I was going to live, if I I'm, I would just rather live on the north side. But if I didn't have to live on uh, the north side of town, Puckett Station is a neighborhood that I would definitely recommend. And people that are looking, if you're looking, let's just say you're in the three to $400,000 range, you should definitely go by the, probably two fifty to 400000 You should drive through there. It's not for everybody, but man, there's a, it's, a, it's an awesome subdivision. I think, Puckett, I think with what Kathleen just said about the uh, block parties and stuff like that, I think Puckett Station's got a lot mm -hmm. more of that old timing feel to it. Puckett, um, they've got one pool. I think they're probably going to do another pool over there. Do I have any more questions? I've been going now for 25 minutes. Man, the, the time flies. And I appreciate everybody that has uh, hung in here. I'm going to look to see if any other questions pop up before we shut it down. Next Wednesday, next Wednesday, I'm probably going to have to do this from the beach. Next Wednesday at this time, I think my flight is early in the morning. But next Wednesday, I'm going to do a Facebook Live from Seagrove Beach or somewhere down there. And I may even do, I don't know, what would be a good topic next week to talk about? Hmm. My viewers, if you would post a comment about uh, what you would like me to talk about next week when I go to Florida, do you want me to talk about? Um, do you want me to talk about Florida real estate? Do you want me to go through any homes down there and show any things? Do you want to see anything in Seaside watercolor? Please post some comments on here, and I will go. I will go there and. Uh, I'll do a video from there if that's what the people, if that's what my peeps want, we'll go do it. Ain't that right, Sean? Oh, yeah. Vacation homes. What'd you like to know about vacation homes, David? A friend of mine, Scott Nagy, he's one of my best friends, and that's where I go. He has bought two, he's got two vacation homes down there. And um, that's something that I would love to have one day. I love going to the beach. You would really need to get your finances in in order. You would need to talk to a lender to find out what you'd have to do. But most of these vacation homes, most of these vacation homes right now when the economy is doing well, David, they more than pay for themselves. So I don't know the rates of return, but I know uh, my good buddy Brandon Burks, Michael Burt, Bruce Lund, they have all bought vacation homes in in the Gatlinburg area. I'm not sure what neighborhood specifically or what city they're in, but I'm going to give you an example. And this is about a year ago. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the person's name, but I'm going to tell you the information they've given me is they roughly have spent, they have roughly, uh, I've already given you your plug, weatherman. I'm so disappointed you're not over there. The, the Gatlinburg returns have been about a 220 price point. That's what they're paying for this. And they're doing it on VRBO. Now VRBO, there's a lot of work. You gotta answer the phone calls, you gotta talk to people. It is an inconvenient thing, but it's still a way to make money. It's probably twelve to $1,500 a year. They've got another little fee that they put on there. But his payment, I don't know if we were to do a quick calculation, 225,000, you're probably gonna have to put 10% down. Um, then whatever, you, I would always recommend on buying real estate. I don't like 30 year investment, 30 year mortgages, unless it's your personal house. But uh, I would I would look at doing it on a 15 or a 20 year note. And the money that he was bringing in, 220, I think he was bringing in about 40 to $45,000 per year. So if his payment was thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars a month, he's more than he's doubling his money, or do, making enough money to where he doesn't have to worry about making the payment out of his pay. He's never made a payment out of his own pocket. So you go to Florida real estate, the the prices are higher, the returns are probably the percentages aren't near as high. My buddy's got a probably a million, $1.2 million house. 
he, um, one of those houses returns like $150,000 a year, but that's work. But it's also a big commitment. You know, you buy something like that. I'd like to learn how landscaping in a pool could hurt the price of your home or increase. It's worth this. Man, she's got some great questions. Boy, you got some great questions. You're going to have to do this every week, Kathleen. Uh, a pool. Here's my rule of thumb. And it's always, it's always uh, going to be a, uh, an individual circumstance. But uh, if you were to buy a pool, let's say if you pay $40,000 for your pool and you put landscaping in it, you're probably going to get about a third of that back out of it. So you, you need to buy a pool for the enjoyment. You need to buy a pool for, for you, not for the next person. The best, the best thing to do is buy a home that already has an existing pool because it's, pools don't, they're not going to, you're not going to get back more than 40 or 50% of, of that value. What most of our market is looking for is they're looking for the most square footage that they can get. They're looking within their price point. Let's say I'm buying a home between two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand. I'm gonna go in there and I'm I've got a family. Let's say I've got a family. I've got two kids and a wife, and she wants all these things with a house. These are must we're gonna call them must haves. A pool would just be an add on. That'd be something that's nice. So if we're at twenty four hundred square feet, we've got what we need and we're at the bottom of our price point that's that's probably going to be more important than if a home had the same square footage but it was twenty thousand dollars more people around here in murfreesboro tennessee are are they're more they're more frugal like if we have in franklin or places that are nearby there's a lot more money chasing houses over there so around here you don't get the return on a pool like you would in other places landscaping you're probably not going to get much of a return on landscaping and it could die. Now it does make the place look good. It does make it more sellable. It does pull on the buyer's emotions when they see it. They may rather buy your home versus something, but let's say if you've got identical homes and one's got the landscaping and it's how much more are you going to pay for the same house with better landscaping? Got that curb appeal? The curb appeal does drive it up because it does work on our emotions and our emotions will lead to our buying decisions, <coughs> but people feel like they can do their own landscaping. So my, my vote would be um, pool. Hey, I'll give you, I'm giving you a plug now, Weatherman. The Weatherman always helps me come up with good ideas. I do want to give a plug out for my, one of my favorite realtors in Murfreesboro, Stephen Weathers. He, uh, he does a lot of business. A lot of people don't know this about Stephen Weathers, the Weatherman. The Weatherman sells a lot of houses whole lot of houses because Stephen Weathers is a hustler. That's the one thing I'll say about that guy. You can reach him. I know his number, 615-971-6007. And I keep, I keep telling the weatherman, he's at that point to where he needs to hire somebody to help him get to the next level. We've been going 33 minutes. I feel like I've been on here about two minutes. I love doing this. So if you guys have any more questions, if you can think of something or if you know anybody that's that's looking would you please share this onto their page which school is currently considered the best is Siegel still the desirable school or is it Blackman that was asked by our very own Kira Sloan who is herself going through a move she uh, has bought and sold through her favorite realtor me um, Kira I don't know what data is going to suggest what what school's the best. Are they going to go by test scores? Are they going to go by demographics of of the who's in the school? Are they going to go? I, I don't know, but I do know Siegel and Blackman both tend to really over they they outperform all the other schools. Excuse me. For now, they're the two newest. Everybody kind of clean, everybody's attracted to those newer schools. When I went to Riverdale, I graduated back in 1992. You know, we had a school cafeteria where you'd go in there, you could either get a burger, cheeseburger, hey, chocolate milk, you, uh, french fries, you could get those old rectangular square pizzas. Did y'all have rectangular square pizzas? Well, then when my buddy David Watson went to Siegel, he walked me when he first started coaching over there. Now he's at Blackman. 
I walked through there and I think they had all these different little areas. You, I think they. We had a, when I was at Blackman, I, I went to Blackman from 03 to 07. And, and that's the fall of 03 to the spring of 07, for those of you guys that are wondering. But when we went through there, we had a chicken tender line, we had a burger line, we had a hot dog line, we had. Did you have salad lines? Did you have Italian? Line, and then we had a line that changed every day. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, when I went there, you could get pizza, you could get a burger. I don't remember what else. Maybe you could get a few other things, but I mean, it's changed so much. But Kira, right now, the, the two best school zones in real estate that perform the best are Siegel and Blackman. But I do think all, with saying that, I do want to say I believe all of Riverdale, or excuse me, all of Rutherford County schools and Murfreesboro City schools perform at a great level because when people move here, when they move to Nashville, the 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 where everybody really wants to move to is Williamson County. That's where all the best. That's where it seems has the best of everything. They've got the most money mm -hmm. over there, and then the second highest we see people that move into Nashville. They, they end up in uh, Rutherford County because Rutherford County seems to be the second best. So all of our schools, when compared to other schools throughout the state, I think all of our schools are good. I would say that probably Triple Blackman is going to be your highest. Be well, all this stuff is going to come down. Or at least most desirable. Well, all this stuff is going to come down to a matter of opinion mm -hmm. because you could see. Uh, I would say because of because of location, because of ease of getting kids back and forth to school. Yeah. If you don't want to put them on a bus, I'd say Triple Blackman just because they're all right there. That Triple Blackman is going to be the most desirable as far as getting people in and out. Yeah, but that's uh, just my opinion. Well, the, everything is. Everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own emotion. And I'm just going by data that shows homes in these school zones have outperformed the other ones. That does not mean, I don't want people coming up to me saying there's better teachers in the, I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you by real estate, by the real estate comparison, Blackman and Siegel's real estate outperforms everybody else. But that could change. That could change with other catalysts that may come into that area. Like you might, here's uh, the Buckhannon area. There's some. There's a lot of things going on, going down on Manchester Highway, going out there. Betsy Maples, Betsy Taylor, she's got something going on out there, her subdivision. It's called the Maples. I, I, I think there's things going on those interstates out. Is there a school going on out there eventually? I don't know. Probably. But if a new school you comes along, people in a certain area, and there's gonna, they're going to pop a school in the middle of it. Well, when when these schools pop up, that 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 area, I could really see the people that are in Buchanan area right now, or whatever you want to call that area. That could be that could be one of those where you got in early and a catalyst came along. The Maples that's going to drive more people out there. I could see that being a very good, a very good area. So. Guys, we've been going now almost 40 minutes, man. Flew by. So I'm going to shut it down unless anybody fires any last second. Kira wants to know if you can recommend a landscaper. We've got several people that we could recommend. You just call <coughs> us, Kira, if you need help with that. Do you have any other questions, Sean? Mm -mm. Google's cleared up. We're all cleared up, and we're going to get back to, uh, to working – Watch uh, Trick Shot Friday. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but if anybody would like to participate. Are we going to be uh, on a guest location uh, for uh, Trick Shot Friday this, this week? We did talk about that. I think I may be going somewhere to do Trick Shot Friday this Friday. But uh, in the coming weeks, any of my friends that would like to come on to Trick Shot Friday, uh, I would like to bring you on here because it's not just about the Trick Shop Friday. It's also a chance. I love to advocate for people. I like to give plugs for people that I believe in and, I, and that I want to help. 
I'm going to give a plug. Hey, if it's it's that time of year where I, if you're looking for an all-terrain vehicle, a motorcycle, a four-wheeler, or anything like that, you need to go see Sloan Cycle right here in Murfreesboro. Tell them, Kira, don't moan, don't groan. Go to Sloan's. So if you're if you're wanting that, please go see my buddies over there. I've got several that work there, but uh, I believe in keeping everything local. And uh, I got hey Katrina has figured out Snap. She's figured out Snapchat. I'm getting guys. Thank you for everyone that tuned in and everybody that shares it. I greatly appreciate it. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for watching Real Estate 101 with me. GTT. Have a great day, friends.